Shea Theodore, one of five most underappreciated defensemen, according to the Hockey News. We'll talk about that topic and more ahead on this edition of Lockdown Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone. Happy Monday. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us, I faked it a little bit. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. Find us wherever you get your podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to our Locked On Golden Knights YouTube channel. We are brought to you today by FanDuel, and you've heard us talk about it. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. As Jacob Stoller of the Hockey News states, Chris, Shea Theater would not be on the underappreciated list if he hadn't missed more than, I guess, it's about a third of the games the past two seasons for VGK. We felt that Theodore was on the trading block. We've talked about this all summer long. We have seen how effective he could be when he is healthy. Is Shea Theodore, first of all, is he respected by the league? Oh, 100% he's respected by the league. There's not a doubt in my mind he's not respected by the league. He's respected by the Golden Knights. He's respected by his peers and his teammates and fans and everything else. And I can't tell you how many times I've talked about on this show how excited I am if Shea Theodore remains with the Golden Knights, I mean, health, obviously, you know, moving past that, I can't wait to see what version of Shea Theodore that we get to see. Forget forget underappreciated by the league. We're talking we're talking a, a day one misfit here that's underappreciated by his own team right now. Not his teammates, but again, let's walk down memory lane that's only, uh, you know, a few short months ago here. Golden Knights trade for Noah Hannafin. Shea Theodore is still on a con or Shea Theodore will have a contract year coming up, obviously, in the current season now. Noah Hannafin is here for 34 days, I think was the number. Gets a very massive extension. Don't think for a second Shea Theodore didn't see that. Don't think for a second uh, Jonathan March so didn't see that either. What else happens to Shea Theodore? Well, Noah Hannafin takes a spot in the top power play unit, takes a spot on some of the top um some of the top moments of the games, um, six attack, all, all sorts of things here where Shea Theodore used to be counted on here. So the goal, Shea Theodore makes the the most underappreciated list on his own team. Forget the National Hockey League. Yeah, and a statistic that stood out in this article, five versus five since 2021, only Kale McCarr, Roman Yossi, Eric Carlson, and Devin Tays have scored more points than Theodore, who averages about a half of a point per game. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. That was impressive. That's a massive stat. And, you know, I've I've gotten my share of heat for, for people think I dog on Shea Theodore. And the health side of Shea Theodore, I definitely dog on. But when Shea Theodore is healthy, he is a outside. I've wrote, written about this. I've talked about this on the show as well. He is a dark horse Norris level candidate who has the ability to put up a 70-point season. That's about the number when you look back at the recent Norris winners. You get to 70 points, you at least get that consideration. Then, obviously, there's a lot more factors that go into it here. Um, something else in the article that I saw, what was it, 40, 42 points, 47 games last year before his injury or the other way Five around? Uh, no, it's right. that's correct. And five goals, I think it was. Yeah, it was five goals. Basically, it was nearly a point-per-game pace, which is – Absolutely phenomenal. Sure, Shea Theodore has some issues with the uh, coughing the puck up at the blue line and things like that, but so does Petrangelo. So do a lot of defensemen around the National Hockey League. You're not going to get the perfect package. Obviously, a Kale McCarr and a Roman Yossi and those types may be as, as close to it as you're going to get, but a healthy Shea Theodore who's going to come into the 24-25 season pissed off, to say the least, I think it's going to be fun. This is one of the many storylines that's going to make the camp great. I really think, you know, you're not going to get it on the microphone from Shea Theater. You're not going to hear it in an interview how he's looking to, you know, get back, uh, take a spot back on the power play and everything mm -hmm. like that. But that's what he wants. That's what any player wants. When you're at this level, you know, you get knocked down a little bit. He's going to want it back. And, oh, by the way, it's a contract season for Shea Theater. So all the more reason he has motivation to go out and get paid. Yeah, you could have the motivation and go back or, you know, go back to your previous form or you can 
take a, a turn. It's all about right health. Direction. If he's healthy, he's phenomenal. Right. And then uh, you have some forces. Uh, he will be, right, the quarterback or the point guard on the power play. And then, no, of no, course, no, Noah Hannafin. No, I mean, he won He lost his job, I should yes, say. You know, correct. Hannafin. Correct. correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, he me being uh, Hannafin. Mm -hmm. And I'm just curious how, again, there's that other intangible of the weight on your shoulders of not having a contract, a new contract in the contract year. We saw how difficult it was for Jonathan Marshall. So I'll tell you firsthand and how difficult it was for players like Chandler Stevenson not knowing what their next move is going to be. That's a heavy weight on your shoulders there. And we'll see what VGK is going to do with him right now. If they have the golden child uh, in, in Hannafin, uh, then it makes Theodore expandable. And if he comes in at about the same with uh, 40 some odd points and doesn't play a lot of games, well, they're not going to resign him for sure. Well, if he has 40, well, he has 40 something points and plays the whole season. I don't think that's a terrible thing either. But I think Shea Theodore will tell you he probably want to be in the 60 point range if he does play the whole season or close enough to it. Um, expendable, that's another, it's, it's, it's a weird word to use with Shea Theodore because he's not expendable. You don't just replace him in the lineup. Noah Hannafin's really good, but we talked about Noah Hannafin on this show. The expectations for Noah Hannafin are just extremely unreasonable when you look at what he has done throughout his career. It's like it's like the Golden Knights are trying to replace a problem that they don't have. Now, if Shea Theodore is injured, that's a problem, obviously. It's a problem for any player. Mark Stone, Shea Theodore, um, anyone, Jack Eichel, who's missed you know good chunks of uh, hockey over the last couple of seasons with the Vegas Golden Knights. But when Shea Theodore is healthy, they're you're talking a great quarterback of the power play. You're talking someone who can perform on special teams. Um, someone who has the ability to take over a game and create a goal from nothing. We saw it in the Stanley Cup final. You you like to point out how the defenseman fell down in that circumstance. I think he fell down because Shea Theodore made a good move, but that's okay. We don't need to agree on that. Um, yeah, we'll never Shea forget Theodore, that. never forget. But listen, is Shea Theodore expendable? That's a little bit aggressive. Did Noah Hannafin's arrival make Shea Theodore seem expendable? Absolutely. That's the reality. Shea Theodore, would he come back for the same contract? Would he no, sign a hometown no, deal? Oh, no. We're, this is an interesting time right now. You know, Stamkos was projected to get in the $6 million range. He gets $8 million. Chandler Stevenson projected to get, we're talking on a per year basis right now. Um, Chandler Stevenson projected to be in the four-ish to five million range he gets over six million and don't don't was, think for one moment either sorry to cut you off there you're fine you're good the, the agents of vgk players are not aware of stevenson's contract uh, no. that they're not going to use that at the, they will be using that at the leveraging table at the bargaining table we're talking a Stanley Cup champion who was a very big part of two Stanley Cup runs, one where the team obviously came short, and then um, what happened a couple of years ago. And Shea Theodore is going to want to be compensated as such, and he should want to be compensated as such. And, you know, the Golden Knights, they do have this um, – they're tough to deal with. Maybe they're not as loyal. It's a very cutthroat way of doing business. And – the players now are going to start using the Golden Knights no differently than the Golden Knights are using the players. If if you're not performing or if the Golden Knights don't feel a need for you, you're gone. It's that simple. It's that easy. Um, now, are these cutthroat ways starting to catch up to the Vegas Golden Knights? The reality is every single pending free agents left. They left. They couldn't strike deals. Jonathan March is so obviously being the most uh, public as far as that situation went. And they were so close on that. They were close on it. They were basically seemed like one year apart. And, you know, the money I don't think was there. And it wasn't enough for March. Like March is so's history in this town, his family being here, his his roots being here, him being here for the last, you know, seven years didn't matter. It was enough for him to go because of how cutthroat things are right now. And don't think for a second that. Other people around the league don't see that. Don't think for a second people people still want to come to Vegas and play. Let's make sure we're clear about this here right now. But when your time is up in Vegas, people are ready to go. Logan Thompson had no problem asking for a trade. We'll talk more about him later. Well, kind of. We'll talk about him later. Um, but everyone, you know, it's 
a lot of the things that the Golden Knights have done in shopping and sh- or shipping out major, you know, big profile players, it's kind of coming back to him a little bit. How this ties into Shea Theodore? Well, Shea Theodore was kicked out of the top power play unit when Noah Hannafin arrived. Noah Hannafin's here for five minutes, gets a massive extension. So Shea Theodore, he's not going to do the team any favors. If they want to pay him market value or close enough to it, he'll stay. If they don't want to get close to that market value, I don't know how they're going to. He's going to, you know, his agent's going to market Shea Theodore as a Stanley Cup champion who is very good at the five on five. And, you know, as far as a point per game pace is, uh, is not too far behind the Roman Yossi's and the Kale McCars of the world. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. And others on the underappreciated list include Tony Cardasco, Adam Pellich of the <laughs> Islanders. I'm glad I didn't take a sip of coffee before that one. I would have made a Jonas miss. Brodeen of the, uh, the Wild, <laughs> Mackenzie Weger of Cal. Gary and Vince Dunn of the Kraken. I even do the Calgary pause like when I'm breaking boxes of cards. Pull it up here. Oh, um, Nazim Kadri from the Cal. Gary Flames in my chat. Like, why does this guy keep doing this? Don't worry about it. Yeah. Coming up next, the NHL's top goalie prospect was traded to San Jose. And pieces from VGK's deal in the Tomas Hurdle Exchange are included in this deal as well. We'll talk about that when we return right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. You've heard us talk a lot about FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for all of you. Now through the 22nd of September, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you will be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All that you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. We're looking forward to the NFL season. You could bet futures and props and everything in in the NFL and in college football as well. We might add, so check it out. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to download America's number one sportsbook. Back on this edition of Lockdown Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. Of course, you could find us wherever you get your podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to our Lockdown Golden Knights YouTube channel. Don't forget on Fridays, it's WTF. Coming very, very soon to a theater near you and to YouTube. Ah, the exclusive Chris and Chris Jr. show. Maybe this weekend, if, I, if we can get it going this weekend or next weekend, definitely. Wow, that is really back to school and everything. Back to it. Hockey season is going guys. now. We got, our, we got our third practice tank on a game on Sunday. It's a... Uh, Tis the season, daughter starting cheer classes or, or cheer at school and her That's soccer early. league and stuff. And it's Allie, yeah, yeah. Allie, oh, yeah. I did not see that coming. It's that time already, huh? Everything, pom poms. Her and dad have the pom poms out. It's great. Then we got to find time to like work and all that stuff too. This is getting tough. Have they added a 25th hour in the day and the eighth day of the week yet? By the way, that'd be nice if they could. We really it nice. would be <laughs> very nice. 6 a.m. comes fast, brother. 6 a.m. comes fast. <laughs> comes super fast i was not prepared for it today mm-hmm. i was up and i was sleeping i nap i told you i don't take like full i don't sleep the full night so i nap wake up watch a netflix show last night at like two in the morning go back to sleep we're here we're primed for the week uh so barry trotz wasn't yeah <laughs> barry trotz was not going to have a malcontent in his locker room so on friday trotz sent Yaroslav Askarov, forward Nolan Burke, and Colorado's third-round pick, stay with me here, in the 2025 draft to the Sharks. The return to the Predators, two pieces that were sent to San Jose previously at the trade deadline in exchange for Tomas Hurdle. Those were the prospect, David Edstrom, who was one of VGK's top prospects, in the organization and VGK's first round pick next year. The Sharks also shipping a goaltender by the name of Magnus Chroma to Nashville. VGK Corona. Him. 
It's Corona. Sorry, we talk. That's why you talk to my on my podcast. Corona. Yeah. Corona. <laughs> Corona. Okay. Corona. Corona to, Na- to Nashville. Great. And then um, interesting how the VGK assets were included in the Predators deal. Yeah, I mean, this is interesting. I mean, start with David Edstrom here. Um, well, you you would have made that trade, right? Uh, you you might have made that trade directly with Nashville in exchange for Askarov. Maybe. I mean, Askarov definitely is the prospect right now, the prospect to have. He's the number one. Um, for a guy who's only made three NHL appearances, it still seems kind of odd to me. But, yeah, um, looking at Edstrom here, this is kind of interesting. Now we're talking someone who's with their third NHL franchise, you know, since basically being drafted here. And you wonder what the outlook is on David Edstrom. If we're talking someone who could have been, I know, Bedard and, you know, players like that. And obviously, um, uh, the kid that's celebrating, if he was somewhere in that level, obviously he's not getting shipped around like this. But three teams, so I don't know if David Edstrom necessarily has at least the immediate NHL outlook. Um, interesting story found from the Tennessean. Um, you know, this this reeks of the Jonathan March or so situation right now where, you know, everyone's playing nice, seem like something's going to happen, then the trade happens, and all of a sudden here comes, uh, here comes uh, everything else. So basically, Trot said he had private talks with Askaroff in recent weeks about a trade. The team wanted time to farther develop the goalie before a move would take place. Okay. Then the trade request was made public. Trotz realized the trade would have to come much sooner. When he asked for the trade request, now this is Trotz talking, just privately, he said he would be a good soldier and all that. Then he came out in public and said he wouldn't have much interest in that. So there you go right there. Trotz basically uh, kind of uh, dragging uh, the youngster here. So how this shakes out, I don't know. Looking at the San Jose Sharks goalie situation, it's actually kind of crowded. So when you go on cap wages, amazing website, cannot be thankful enough for the new cap wages site here. Um, you got Vitek Vanacek and Mackenzie Blackwood, a 28 and 27 year old, two very capable NHL goaltenders. They're in the final years of their contracts at 3.4 and 2.35. You scroll down, Askarov right now is listed to the minor league. Uh, that'd be uh, the Barracuda, um, the San Jose Sharks AHL team. But Askarov is under contract for the 24-25 season at 925000 And then he did sign a $2 million or a $4 million extension with the San Jose Sharks. So we'll see how much Askarov actually gets into the NHL this season. I would have to assume that now the, the San Jose Sharks will look to trade one of those uh, veteran goaltenders. I mean, is there a world where uh, injuries plague the Vegas Golden Knights and one of these guys ends up here? You never know, but... uh. That's uh, that's the Ascroft whirlwind. We're talking a goalie here who's you know a little bit he's, he's wound a little bit differently. He's got a little bit of an attitude from what I've heard. Uh, we're talking a goalie who made it. Did he make a save? A player missed a shootout attempt to win a game. An attempt to win a game. Askarov like pulls the net down and starts doing push-ups with it in an AHL game. I thought it was cool. Don't get me wrong. That was funny. That was funny. But we're just talking. You got a lot of weird pieces. A lot of a lot of little a lot of weirdness surrounding Askarov. That's all I'm trying to say. Askarov, what really stands out to me, a .911 save percentage in the AHL in back-to-back seasons, which is really difficult to do. It's minor leagues, right? It would be akin to having a two-point-something ERA in minor league baseball. Which doesn't happen in the Pacific League, to be fair, (laughs) with the... With uh, the elevation and uh, the 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 way the air is and stuff, I've you know I've been to games, I've been to a couple of Aviators games, and actually Reno is even worse. I mean Reno, I don't know how often they even put um, lines out there for AAA baseball. I feel like most lines up in Reno are like the over under is probably like sixteen and a half, and the over is probably they juiced to like minus one hundred and forty. There was there was a two to one game the other day up there. Was there, it was, there was probably a rainout, but Vegas um. Reno. Yeah, but that's that that that's an oddity right there. We went to one game. It was early in the season. I remember a couple of years ago, and just that ball just it juiced, juiced, juiced more than a Barry Bonds home run ball back in the the early two thousands. Yeah. So Askarov said he did not. Right, if I'm correct, you broke this last week on the air. Did not want to play in the AHL. No. Nope. Go- he was no. not going to report. Right. Um. Yeah, I believe it did come out that he wasn't. I got. Uh, no, it's okay. I, 
pretty yeah, sure it was something he came like out that. and said, yeah, okay, yeah, Kevin Weeks. I read the tweet. Kevin Weeks. I read the I read the tweet that morning that he didn't want to report there. It took me a second. It's, it's Monday, Tony. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. I um, got you. But again, we're talking someone here like, who is Askarov? Okay, he's a 22-year-old goaltender. He's a 22-year-old here, and this kid. Number one goalie prospect in the, in the league. Sure, but I mean, geez, be you've done nothing. He's done nothing yeah, right now. He's Trot, done well Trot, in the Trot, AHL. He's done very well. Trotz basically said that. He goes, we don't know. He goes, maybe Edstrom is the star in this deal. Maybe Askarov is. We can't tell. We don't know yet because they're prospects and they have to develop. Edstrom, we'll see. I mean, um, uh, listen, someone gets moved around this much, there's questions. You look at the National Hockey League level, Pierre-Luc Dubois has been moved around a, a lot. Um, even a Patrick Line has had a few different teams lately. Um, did I say to break it? I don't know. There's um, just all these players that are starting to get moved around. And when someone's on their third team in like, you know, four or so seasons, you got to wonder – What's I going think, on there? I think Peyton Krebs held up this deal. Peyton, Peyton Krebs, Krebs definitely held up this deal. There you go. I like that. And I mean, listen, if, if Edstrom is Peyton Krebs, um, you know, that's I, I guess that's not terrible, but it's definitely maybe not what the Preds were hoping for. But Trotz is fun. I mean, I, I think I, I, if, if any GM besides Kelly McCrimmon needs a reality show, Barry Trotz might be the oh, one, right? I wanted him here. Remember, I said, "Oh, we would have loved Barry Trotz here. That would have been amazing." Hire McCrimmon and, and hire Trotz when he said that he wanted a GM job. I, I had a fun interaction with uh, Barry Trotz at the coffee clutch at a an intermission of a Golden Knights Preds game last year, and I started by saying, "There's a video out there, guys. It's it's, it's great. There's a soccer football, a soccer coach uh, somewhere in Europe. A paper airplane literally glances this guy's head." Like it's all it is. It's a paper airplane and the soccer coach like feels it. He goes, he drops like a ton of bricks, like a soccer player does. If someone tugs on their Jersey, it's like he tore an ACL because the, the paper airplane hit him in the head. And then there's a side by side of Barry Trotz taking a puck to the head on the bench. His head's starting to bleed. He gets a towel. He just shrugs it off and they just keep on going here. So I asked Barry Trotz about that and we got a good chuckle. And then I just quickly asked him, I said, listen, what, what, what does the candle burn brighter for? Do you, would you rather be down on the bench still, you know, in the fight, or do you like it being up here? And he said, when the team's winning, he'd rather be on the bench when they're having trouble. He likes being up in, up in the, up in the press box, just kind of watching. So, but you know, Trotz is fun. Um, what he's doing down in Nashville. I mean, two years ago to where the Preds are right now, this is pretty fun to watch. And he doesn't hold a whole lot back in the media as we just talked about. And, you know, he seems just like a good, legit dude. That's probably good to deal with too. I think the other GMs probably uh, like dealing with them. He's pretty direct and straightforward. And um, yeah, we need a Barry Trotz reality show. I, the the U two situation. I would love to see his take on that. It definitely wasn't a beautiful day, and but the team elevated themselves after that, and Ooh, uh, they weren't oh, so bad. Ooh, that was pretty good. I got, three, I got three. I got three songs there. I got three U two songs. You've there. been working on songs. You went through the catalog last night. I did. Uh, I did. Edstrom. Edstrom, 6'3", 190, a middle six center. By all accounts in San Jose, they said that he was the fifth best prospect for the Sharks. So that's where he was at. I mean, Celebrini, Will Smith. The Sharks are loading up right now. Sharks, um, they, they might be a doormat for another season or two, but things are getting better, and you're going to start seeing a change in the culture now. And, you know, it's going to be it'll be fun when the Sharks, a little more fun when the Sharks come to town. But, like, you look at Edstrom's numbers here, uh, Sweden Junior League. I'm assuming that's what the SWE, JR, yeah, yeah. and HL is. Yeah. 11 points, 31 games, 28 points, 28 games. Only played a handful on 22-23. Hey, did he, play he played in the IKEA League, too. Yeah, yeah, I got it. His last season, 44 games and 19 points. Now, to be fair, I don't know what type of numbers we're looking for here. Is this the type of league where if you're putting up these numbers, that's not bad? Or is this the type of league where there's someone out there scoring 67 points in 46 games? Like, I don't know how these leagues are. Maybe this is okay. But point being is nothing's jumping off the charts with Edstrom, who is only 19 years old. Like, yeah, he's 19. 19 years old. We got a long way to go. Yeah. Here he would have gotten buried, though, in this organization. There's no doubt. Um, so I think it's good for him. He'd be stuck in Tahoe and then maybe get a cup of coffee in the AHL and get traded. Coming up next, we're going to talk about Logan Thompson's mask that was posted by one Crick, uh, Chris Golick here. Who? Crick Golick. Chris Golick over the weekend. Stay with us. Locked on Golden Knights. 
passion, drive, and patience, what brings home that winning trophy, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle, to level it up to peak performance, from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die to choose from, you will always find exactly what you are looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you receive your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you are burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need, all the prices you want, it is easy to turn your car into the MVP and to bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Back on this edition of Lockdown Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick reporting from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. Find us where you get your podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to our Locked On Golden Knights YouTube channel. So, Chris, you posted a photo the other day of a mask that I'm guessing was not approved. Uh, that uh, goalie mask for Logan Thompson. Tell the listeners about the mask first how you got all of those hundreds of thousands of impressions and how you can <laughs> help out this show by doing so. It's funny that this tweets up to 280,000 views. So uh, Logan did send me a, a picture of this. We're going back a little while back now over the summer here, and he was hoping it was going to go through. And I'm not going to go too deep into the conversations, but – you know, what I will say is the mask was fun, and a lot of people probably didn't see it as that, probably internally and around the NHL, which is why it's not yeah, going to happen, Washington, unfortunately. In Washington with politics, of course, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. no, 100%. Yeah. I mean, it's listen, it's it's fun, and I'm, I'm okay with the goalie, you know, trying to have a little fun. He's not saying what side he's on by that mask. I, Beavis and Butthead were portrayed uh, on the same way, and to be fair, this did happen before there was a, tra a change in the Democratic Party. The mask might have had to been redone, might have been a little weird if they would have, but yeah, I don't want to get too deep and piss yeah. someone off here. But the point is here, it was fun. It was, you know, Logan Thompson kind of just taking a little bit of a shot here at, you know, what's what's happening with, I guess, our, our presidential nominees. And um I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I don't think he missed the mark too much by by the way the mask was. I have no problem saying that. If someone, someone satirical. wants to drag me for that, you go right ahead. It's satirical. It's sometimes we get a little bit too caught up in just it's being fun. It's okay. politically correct, and it it is fun. And right? this is not politically correct, which is why I love it. But it's fair on both sides. But it's in fair. the but in the NHL, yes, they're definitely politically correct on every front. I mean, listen, we can go pretty deep here with some changes the NHL has made to some of their internal policies about um, supporting the different um, NHL initiatives and stuff like that. And, you know, with um, with changes that have been made, I don't want to go too, too deep in that either because we'll piss off a bunch of people again, which I don't mind, but I don't just don't feel like doing it right now. Um, but point being is, you know, maybe there's a little bit of the no fun league happening here, right? The NFL, no, the no fun league, you know, and. I get it. I mean, listen, you're in Washington. You're in Washington. You are taking a shot at both presidential candidates. You're literally one of your coworkers, right? I mean, to a degree, I guess the president's all of our coworkers, if you want to take the we the people approach here. But point being is, yeah, you're literally, I don't know how far the Capitals practice arena and AHL arena is from, from, you know, the White House and all of that. But I understand Someone like eh, this probably isn't a good idea. Just the rest, me. the rest of that mask was fire. It really was fire. Oh, of course. It's. I mean, it's. You got the. You got an eagle on there. You know, not as good. Not as good as the Eddie the Eagle, Eddie Belfour mask. But you got an eagle on there. You got all the other Washington stuff happening there. And then on the back, you got the best debate table in the history of the universe. Here, you got Beavis and Butthead. Uh, 
you know, la- hamming it up, having a good conversation. I'm not going to lie, actually. Beavis looks pretty good. But Butthead didn't age very well, but Beavis aged pretty well here with the, <laughs> the short gray and all that. He looks, he looks pretty good right there. But the mask that never was, Logan Thompson nearly had the best mask in the history of modern hockey. A lot of people agreed with that. Some people didn't agree with it. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of enjoy shaking things up and watching people just go nuclear. And there's a few people who actually absolutely had a meltdown over this. And I love they it. They did? So even better. Really? I didn't read. A, I read some of the comments. They thought that it was pretty good. Most most was positive, and then some people, you know, there were people that felt he was making fun of American politics and stuff. And fine, okay, I, you're not wrong, but it's in a, it's in a different. It's not. It's in, it's different than just making fun of it. That's all. That's all. Speaking of meltdowns, this season fans are going to be very emotional when all these players come back, and there's all these. Well, they've got to be busy making tribute videos there in the production department all summer long. I think that uh, folks are going to have a really hard time emotionally the way that this fan base is. And then, uh, oh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, did you see, uh, published somewhere over the weekend, Max Pacioretty has three offers on the table, three, and they say it should be announced pretty soon where he's going to be going. Pretty did they say which teams by any chance or no? They did not. They teased okay. us like we do on this show. So it was his it was it was his agent out there working the phones probably. What's really possibly happening Patch Reddy has one offer he doesn't like it and he's maybe trying to get the I don't know. I'm I'm not speaking on behalf of Max. Would be crazy. It'd be good for Max Patch Reddy if he gets 3, you know, with the injury concerns and he's Oh, listen, Patch Reddy. I mean, I think what both ACLs in the last couple of seasons he what didn't he wasn't his last comes back gets like a hat trick for carolina and then like right away boom hurt again i mean it's 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 unfortunate and patch ray does not have a stanley cup yet i believe and he's one of those guys you'd like to see you know get there he's been around long enough and i mean does (laughs) patch ready get a pto no he's not coming back with the golden knights he's not coming back no he does have he does probably does not have a clean car because in other cities, they don't wash it every day like they do at the country club. Here. One thing I was wondering, and maybe I don't know how we re- research this, but obviously we know about Tanner Pearson coming on the PTO to Vegas. Is it common for teams to have more than one PTO in camp? Are there any other players out there, you know, a Max Pacioretty? I'm not saying for Vegas, just more of a, of a you know, grand perspective here. Would there be a world where the Golden Knights bring one or two more players in? Why wouldn't you? PTO? Why, why I don't know. What, I don't know what's common. I don't know what's common. That's the thing. Does like, it matter? Kevin LeBlanc I mean, would be need... an interesting one, and someone else. Yeah. But you said that before. You did. Yeah. No, I like it. I mean, I think a PTO is good, and for the Golden Knights, it definitely needs to shake up some of the younger kids right now, and just make sure they're on points in camp. Because if there's not, you got someone who is a serviceable piece with what 680 NHL games, something like that. Mm-hmm. It's, it's over 600. Um, been okay in the playoffs as well so it's it's nice and it's a good move by mccrimmon yeah you need that competition in camp for sure yeah, and, and you need some so sorry guys you need some depth. <laughs> we appreciate everyone tuning in on this yeah, monday yeah, edition yeah. thank you so much especially our everydayers we definitely appreciate all of you out there get with the movement if you will and subscribe to our lockdown golden knights youtube channel i'm going to Try not to be political on this show. I I never, we never are. We don't care. Uh, In any event, no, on Fridays we have WTF. I'm sure something out of that comment will crop up on Friday. And on Saturdays, coming very, very soon. Yeah. The Chris Chris Summer. We've been talking about this. Like, it it was just yesterday you were busting my chops. You guys ever going to record again? Like, yeah, in the fall. Well, it's the fall already. I said sometimes, sometimes you guys are on. Well, it used to be every week to – are you guys ever recording again to sometimes? Now there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yep. Again, appreciate you tuning in, everyone. Thank you so much. We'll see you again next time. For my man, Chris Golick, I'm Tony Cardasco from Las Vegas. Have a great day, everyone, and please take care.